rules and open government committee meeting for November 6, 2013. Unless somebody has a change to the agenda order, we'll start at the beginning, which would be not having to consider the November 12th regular council meeting agenda, but moving to the November 19th draft agenda. Anything on page one? Just a question. Are we anticipating as long potentially of a closed session next week where we might want to start a little early? Right now we only have uh, labor and one litigation item. So the short answer is no. Oh, wait, we do have a personnel item. Uh, we might. I, I would I would rather start early than... Let's go for the 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Yeah, so give us a little, little edge there. And I'm going to... Apologize in advance. I'll never be able to pronounce the invocator when I introduce them. I'm just letting you know that ahead of time. Okay. Anything else on page one? What page two or three? Page four or five? Uh, Mr. Mayor, on the Retirement board governance discussion. Is that something we want to try and give a, not before a time certain, given that we're going to have people come from the retirement services and outside folks, or should we just know that it's begin in the beginning and we're going to hopefully get to it right away? Well, it is in the beginning, but if we said not before a certain time, it would probably be helpful for people that have, that have got to come in because we've got to get the... Uh, the, the folks from Cortex scheduled, and there's not that much on the consent calendar. Only one ceremonial. So we just say not before two. Sure. Okay. Anything else on page, or before we leave at page five? So I'm assuming the retirement board governance discussion is going to take an hour. Yeah. I, there's, I think know, it so might it's take a long a, report. I think it might take a little longer. Yeah. Um, definitely in the category. It depends on how much council discussion, but the report itself is pretty long. Yeah, the, when when they present it to the retirement boards, the PowerPoint was 100 slides long. But I'm sure it'll be shorter. But well, I'm looking forward to that. So we figure an hour at minimum. It could be two hours. Yeah, I think two would probably, because I, I would imagine there's going to be a series of questions yep. because it's a complicated issue. Yep, that's for sure. Okay, I think I'll pitch five. How about page six or seven? Uh, seven point one says it's going to be heard jointly with eleven point eight, but it is not clear whether we're going to do them in the afternoon or the evening. Seven point one. Plant master, plant master oh, plan. Uh, okay, would you read this one? Uh, I'm looking at a, a, a draft of the agenda. It may not be the most recent draft. So, plant master plan. It's not on the agenda. No, they, they okay. Okay, 10 5. We moved that. Oh, Is it on this agenda? It's on the evening. Oh, evening. Yes, we moved it. Okay, what, what about doing it in the afternoon instead of the evening? Because I just looked at the evening agenda and there's a lot of stuff on it. <laughs> That's why I ask. You'll get through it. I mean, we'll discuss that when the I, I think the problem that we don't have an answer, uh, Laurel, uh, we've noticed for general plan and zoning for the evening. Uh, yes, so what, um, and as you look at the agenda, we would uh, recommend that 7.1 read to be heard jointly with item 11.8 in the evening. It's We do have an appeal of the EIR, and that's been noticed for the evening. Several of the items in the um, 11 category can be moved to consent, so I think once we get through the general plan items, the balance of the land use items under item 11 can move um, more swiftly. Okay, so that needs to go in the evening. We'll come back and talk about the sequence of events uh, for the evening when we get done here. Anything on page, else on page six that does move into the evening agenda next. So we have the general plan hearings, which includes two treatment like we just talked about. We have uh, rocket ship. Looks like about five hours worth of materials starting at seven. Hard to tell, but any any reason we can't start at six? Or 
just because of the noticing that's already gone out? Yeah, they're all noticed for mm -hmm. 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Items 11.5, 11.6, and 11.7 could be moved to a consent calendar to assist uh, with agenda management if it's the will of the Rules Committee. Um, and then 11.10 uh, is an administrative hearing, so we would need to keep that on public hearing. Well, whether they're on the consent or not, they'll get the same amount of talk. And we have the Thornton Way project that was deferred because they were going to revise their plans. So is that likely to be ready to go? That is ready to go, Mayor. I would just only ask that it's heard after five wounds and after uh, the water treatment plant. But that will. Yeah. That will happen. Okay. Anything? Let's just go through the individual items. Anything else on page seven? Page eight or nine? 10 or 11 or 12. All right, so if we go through them in the order on the agenda, we would have to move Thornton Way to later because that's on early on the agenda, which is okay. And then we have the uh, Five Wounds Urban Village plans rocket ship and then we get into the miscellaneous things then the water wastewater facility master plan so the uh, category of 11 items 11 point items other than the rocket ship are there any of those that are going to generate a lot of public participation or council participation. We have the Thornton one, which we'll, we'll do later. Yes, the Thornton, um, both the, in the uh, 10.3 as well as 11.4, will likely generate a fair amount of public interest. So, you know, if it's the will of the council, you may take public testimony for all of the items once and then be sure we just have separate motions on the individual general plan and rezoning actions. One thing the Rules Committee could consider is that since the master plan is under 7.1, you might wish to start your evening with the plant master plan and handle that first, all of the bundle of um, approvals associated with that, and then move into the general plan public hearing. So that, that's a suggestion if, if you wish. Well, I'm having a little trouble mentally tracking it because so many things are going to be heard with other things. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've got mentally I have a category of miscellaneous small stuff and I'm not sure what that is. And then we have the Thornton piece which we talked about doing last. We have the wastewater piece and, and then we have the, the rocket ship and the five wounds mm -hmm. discussion. So the, I guess the first question is, is is there a way and should we put the miscellaneous little stuff up front, get that out of the way before we get into the, the longer agenda items? But I'm not sure there's anything left in the miscellaneous small stuff. Right, 11.5 through 7 are the miscellaneous small things that are all conforming zonings that could easily be on a consent calendar uh, for the evening uh, as, as one way of of handling those. Can we take the 11 sequence ahead of the 10 sequence? You know, Mayor, I just fear that uh, sometimes when you have items that are inconsequential, sometimes when items are inconsequential, the council will decide to discuss them for, you know, uh, ad board and, it, you know, a huge amount of time. I've noticed that from And so, but if they're sort of towards the end, then they'll just go as they go. You know, especially if these ones you're looking at where these, you know, rezoning a warehouse from uh, heavy industrial to, uh, you know, IP industrial, which really is still jobs. is nothing controversial, but someone might want to comment. Well, if we just took the Thornton way and put it to the back and started it at the beginning, we have item 10.2, which is Goodyear and Pepitone, which is to be heard with items 11.2 and 11.3. So that's later 
we have five wounds, so five wounds would be the first, uh, just in the sequence in which the agenda is written, right? Uh, right, and I think when, uh, when staff was working on the agenda, and when we say to be heard with items 11.2 and 11.3, it was more intended that we would bring 11.2 and 11.3 into the general plan calendar, so that way the council is taking the testimony on all of the rocket ship items, for example, together, then making their respectful, uh, respective decisions. So uh, it wasn't, wasn't to postpone the uh, general plan discussion to the 11, but rather bring the 11s forward. Um, and similarly for 7.1 with the master plan, our intention was we want, the council should consider the body of the testimony from the public for all three items, the EIR, the general plan, and the master plan together. Um, so, but there's probably other ways of, of crafting this. So if, if it's easier for the council to say, you know, whichever order you wish to take them, if you want to take rocket ship first, then the treatment plant, five wounds, and then Thornton, uh, we would be happy to work with the manager's office just for clarity around what are those big items uh, and we can, you know, it may be a little bit unusual for our agenda format, but at least that way the public will know what what is the sequence and, and how do these pair together. So that would be one way to do it. All things rocket ship, treatment plant, five wounds, five wounds. So everything. Thornton. and Thornton, mm -hmm. and then tiny thing, and then whatever's left. Whatever numbers are on them. So I got a, I got a question. Is it just because we've always done it this way that we have to have 10 and 11 separate on the agenda? Or can we just change the way we do things and make an agenda that seems a little bit more user-friendly to the public and the Rules Committee and the Council? I think going forward, I know we don't want to change our agenda practices right now, but we do have the work plan coming up right. later in our day today. But I would suggest we put our heads together and find a way to say when we're having general plan, maybe we just change the title and it says 10 are general plan slash public hearings together. 10 and 11 are combined on the days we do general plan and they just go in sequence, bam, bam, bam. So the, yeah, the, and the short answer is yes, that's the way we've always done it. Um, that's how it's set forth in the rules resolution, but <coughs> the, the committee can play with that as it sees fit. Um, but the general plan hearings are supposed to be once a year, and that's why you don't see it very often. I just think going forward, it would help everybody, I think, especially the public, to follow our logic or illogic. Well, we haven't done general plan hearings for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. So you ready for a motion? I think if... <laughs> We, if we all think that's the, the sequence, the best sequence to put them in, that seems to be the uh, case. Yeah, from rocket, mm. wastewater, five wounds, Thornton, and other. Yep. Yep. So my, my motion is to approve the agenda as amended, as just stated by the clerk. Second. Okay. I have a motion to do that, Mr. Wall. You want to speak? Thank you, sir. Um, with reference to item 3.3, .3, ordinance related to office holder candidate legal defense funds. I think you are right in going forward with this. I do think it needs to be amended because it's foreseeable that there are misguided souls out there in this world that uh, one of the restrictions that you have to start the fund if you're in imminent danger of, of prosecution or being sued, it should be as you immediately apply for office or get elected. Furthermore, I think it's in the course of regular doing business instead of the restriction that prohibits mass communication and mass mailings. You should be permitted to use mass mailings and communications as a restriction for uh, raising money for the particular uh, problem that you have to use this fund for. I think that this would streamline the entire fund. It would also keep a little bit better bookkeeping with officeholder accounts to be able to raise money for the legal defense fund. and. Um, Furthermore, I think it's almost to the point now where candidates running for office have to form their own limited liability companies to protect themselves, which I, I find disturbing. 
But in other words, I, I think that what I've just given testimony should be considered because it would streamline the legal defense fund, and I think that uh, that fund is, is appropriate, and I think what I've said would be appropriate uses. Thank you. That concludes public testimony. We have a motion to approve with the, the amendments and the order on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. That's approved. Upcoming study session agendas what would be the one for Tuesday, the 12th, Urban Villages study session. Mr. Mr. Wall, you want to speak on this? Uh, I'm very concerned about the formula that has been discussed and defined about how urban villages are, are based on with reference to the number of jobs for the number of housing. And I think what would be prudent is to put a moratorium on housing projects throughout the city until jobs become more pronounced. I think the equilibrium has shifted the other way now and uh, the formula for urban villages uh, is a failure. It won't be able to sustain itself and therefore money spent for urban villages at this point would be wasted in my opinion due to the fact that housing is so lopsided compared to jobs. It makes urban villages un untenable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, the draft agenda and I'd like to start with going back to June 4th, a memorandum that was approved by the city council. <coughs> describing what we want in, in the urban village study session and make sure that we get that in the study session before we get into the financial financial piece of it. So it, in June, the council said come back in September with models of an urban village in two or, th two or three of our highest priority urban village plan areas that show a conceptual layout of office, residential, commercial development, and information regarding infrastructure improvements, amenities, and the best available cost estimate. Uh, that's part of an effort to get very concrete on the implementation side. We're way beyond visioning, and we need to get into implementation. I think this is the, remains the best way to do that, is to take one and try to work through all the difficulties in real concrete terms. And I know that staff has done work on multiple areas and some are more, more developed than others. But I think if we just get down to, okay, here's one example. If we could just get one example, that would help everybody understand it. If we get two or three, uh, that would be very helpful. So I would suggest that that direction go into the, the agenda for the meeting before the items the staff has outlined on the financing. And then the other piece is the council direction from October 22nd regarding the jobs first nature of our general plan and how that urban village plan needs to fit into that sequence. And that's just a given, council's already approved that, so the study session needs to reflect that. We're not just trying to figure out a way to convert uh, employment lands to, to residential. And um, Then we can talk about the uh, fiscal context and financial financing approaches, financing options, but I'm really trying to get down to what do we need to do, how much does it cost before we start talking about the financing options, and what, the what do we need to do is a combination of what we would like to see and what it would take to encourage somebody to put jobs in a village. We don't have to do very much to encourage people to put residential development in the villages. We need to do something to encourage the job creation and that's part of the discussion I think we need to have that fits into the financing. But the discussion of how expensive to make it uh, is an important part of the feasibility of any given uh, village plan. So we don't have to say the village plans that we're looking at are the most important, uh, anything about them. It's just, okay, these are plans where we have the data, we can do the analysis or we have done the analysis, 
and therefore we can use it as a, as a model for us to try to figure out, okay, these are the pieces, these are the things we need to do, and then talk about how we get there. Uh, and so I don't know whether it's Stevens Creek or Winchester or San Carlos or whatever. I know staff's worked on, on quite a few of them. Pete? I would just say that I agree. I think that we're at a point right now where we really need to button up a lot of these things and be ready because we have uh, one of three possible scenarios that are going to happen. One is we have uh, real concrete footing on what we want to see and we have plans and people will take advantage of the economic cycle and build what has been envisioned in our general plan or we won't be ready and people will just build what's not envisioned in our general plan because they have an existing land use or will continue to um, create an environment where the pressure is on to convert the land and uh, all kinds of haphazard development will continue to go. And uh, once someone builds a commercial building and takes up uh, a portion of a village, it's going to be there for a long time and we're not going to see those villages come to fruition in our lifetimes. So I really want to make sure that we have this discussion, we figure these things out, because I know in my district, I'm sure everyone's seeing it in their district, there's suddenly a lot of interest in doing things. And when you don't have a there there yet, it's really hard and I don't want to get substandard projects that go contrary to the plan that the council's approved or uh, miss the economic window and sit around for a long time. So I, this is very timely and I agree with every single thing you said, let's get it done. Okay, anything else uh, from, from the staff in terms of the study session? So that got enough clarity. What Question for you, Mayor yes. and City Attorney. So we have study sessions and sometimes they're informative and sometimes there's action. I just want it to be known which one is this. At this point, it, it looks like it's just a discussion item. Um, if, if you want, if the committee wants to have the council have the ability to give direction, then the agenda should reflect that. I'd just like to ask what the mayor, what he wants. Well, I think the council may want to give some direction. On Would, wouldn't next steps, we could, yeah. um, maybe discussion of next steps and direction would be a way to re-word number five. Crazy. Yeah. In order to allow yeah, you just got to yeah. give the public right. some knowledge or awareness that uh -huh. there could be some action. Uh -huh. Sure. Because we, we are going to have some implementation steps. I, I doubt if we're going to have all, all those figured out in the study session. Right. right. So it's, it's likely we're going to say, okay, staff, take this and do, do something with it and bring it back to us at some level. So that's part of it. But we also start the discussion of the first of the urban villages a week later mm -hmm. on the 19th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that direction would be given on, on the 19th for, for those, but there's a lot of work that's been done in that area. So it be, it's informative for the work on the 19th, but I think we want to be in a position where we can give some direction if we see a path forward so that we've narrowed down the range of things that staff has to worry about. Mayor, going back to your initial comments, um, you mentioned about having some of the discussion before we just jump into the fiscal imp imp portions. Is there something you're suggesting that we put in here differently or is that just to staff the on how they present no, I, it ought to be another bullet in there. Okay. And maybe it fits in the urban village case studies category, but I want to do the, the case study first, first before we start talking about all of the difficulties of financing it. Let's figure out what we want, and then we figure out how to finance it. Thank you very much. The, um, all excellent comments. We were intending to use the introduction to help frame the item for the council, articulating what is in an urban village, what are we trying to achieve, um, and then uh, segueing into the, the actual case studies. So we, you know, if we want to make the introduction part more clear, that we intend to respond to the June direction from council in terms of what are tangible examples of, of urban villages, what are our goals, and how do we get there. Uh, we also feel it's important to uh, remind the public that we have deliberately uh, looked at growth in certain time horizons, and that is a different way of doing business here in San Jose than in the past, and what does that really mean for overall implementation? So uh, we're happy to rework the agenda language as, as you see fit, but it is we're already working towards um, identifying the content 
similar to what you, you have stated. And we would very much appreciate Council's direction under next steps, so um, any ap appropriate wording changes there uh, are also appreciated. Thank you. So if I might suggest then, number two perhaps is a more general introduction rather than specific to fiscal uh, context and infrastructure and services. We'll add an item between two and three that is a report on case studies. Uh, let's see, we'll perhaps leave the rest as is and add five next steps and direction and we'll restructure the agenda as a special meeting rather than simply a study session, if that works. You can you can call it a study session, <coughs> but it, it's really that in the body of the okay. it just says there's a direction. So whether you call it a meeting or it's a meeting nonetheless. Well, okay, that, that sounds okay to me. So that'll be my motion to amend as just outlined. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve as amended. Mr. Wall, did you want to speak? Okay. All right, we have a motion then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, not opposed. That's what we'll do. Approved. <coughs> Legislative update I believe we have nothing to report. We do not. I was in Sacramento last week, and the legislature's not in session, so it was. Pretty calm and quiet. So no damage occurred. Meeting schedules, anything else to discuss? The public record, anything committee like to pull for discussion? Mr. Wall. Sir, item E, it's titled P.W. Stevens Environmental Incorporated Commercial Activities in My Neighborhood. What we have here is that what I, in my opinion, is a business model in which a company doesn't want to uh, either secure parking for their vehicles, assign a vehicle to an employee to take it home, whereupon the, the vehicle is a commercial vehicle, it could be a van or a box truck, comes into the neighborhood, blight in my opinion. In addition, other employees congregate in the morning as a joint meeting place to go off to their assignments. I consider this a de facto satellite office, and in addition to that, I raise the issue of diminution of value to my property because of the commercial activities of this company that has no business in the city of San Jose. In other words, they're not licensed in the city of San Jose as far as business licensure. There's zoning issues, and of course, there's the issues of uh, in my opinion, violations of the Municipal Regional Stormwater NPDES permit because the, the employee washes the vehicle, clean the vehicle out on the public street. The company advertises on their vehicles. They're involved in uh, asbestos, lead, and mold removal, amongst other things. Uh, the residence also has an issue of uh, too many people in the residence. It's a 1,050 square foot house with roughly actually 12 people living there. And then the influx of this commercial activity furthers the diminution of value to my property. And it gets to the issue of apportionment, whether the city of San Jose permits these activities to occur, uh, for they are known to government. And I bring this issue up because I'm rather fed up of it. And I can see this type of business model expanding throughout the city because of its utilitarian nature to companies uh, because it's under the radar. Nobody sees it or understands how to report it properly. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to refer item E to code enforcement and note and file the rest. Second. A motion to approve one referral, note and file the rest. On the motion, all in favor? Opposed, unopposed, that's approved. Next item, category, boards, commissions, and committees. We have a council appointment advisory commission work plan. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is to approve on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, unopposed, that's approved. I just want to ask Tony how it's going with this new 
structure, some new committees, and a new uh, format, including this uh, new title here. There's some wrinkles, but we're working on that. We've got the policy 04 has been drafted and is at the attorney's office for review, and we drafted it based on all of the things we learned from the last recruitment cycle. So we're still ironing out those little bugs, but I think it's getting better. Okay. Uh, next category is rules committee reviews, recommends, and approvals. G2 is a city event for Commodore Park Grant Motion opening. Approved. Second. Motion is to approve. I just have a quick question. Yes. This is, I think this is the first time I've seen that a council member is going to issue an information memo detailing the results of the event. Is that always in it? It's always. It's in the template, the memo template. So do I owe a whole bunch of memos here? Is that something that we really need? I, I, have, I have not started tracking that, but I am starting to track um, certain things <laughs> like travel report outs, and I noticed that in the template and thought, I should probably start checking in on those, so I think or we need to remove the language. Yeah, I think before we start that, maybe we should look at the council policy, because we passed the council policy on this that led to these memos, and I don't know how I've never seen it. I just happened to look down and read it right now, and I thought he was an overachiever and wanted to write a memo, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> maybe I'm an underachiever, no, several hundred, so uh, we'll go ahead and approve, the, approve this, but... I think we need to look into that. And I've got some language changes coming for that template anyway, so that it's a perfect time. Well, if you're going to do that, what would be nice is if the date of the events were a little more noticeable, so that it's nice to get them early on people's calendars. It's easy to see when it's going to be on the council mm -hmm. agenda, but not necessarily when the event itself is. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve the Commodore Park Grand Opening on a motion. All in favor? Opposed? And opposed, that's approved. Policy redistribution of tickets and passes to city agency officials. Mayor, uh, Patty Degnan and Neelam Nadu from my office are here to address some changes. Uh, you know, this gift policy seems to be ever-evolving, and uh, these are sort of, uh, given experience, uh, attempts at cleaning it up, so. Okay. Good afternoon, Neelam Nadu from the city attorney's office. The city currently has a ticket distribution policy, council policy 9-11, to distribute event tickets to city officials, which was revised in 2008 to meet FPVC requirements. As used within this policy, the term official includes designated employees. This policy requires a designated ticket administrator to oversee the distribution of tickets and report the recipient and event information on a FPVC form 802. In 2012, the FPVC amended this regulation again and updated its Form 802. These FPVC amendments require the completed Form 802 to be forwarded to the FPVC for posting on its website and allow ticket transfer to one guest, which is not considered a gift requiring Form 700 disclosure. Also in 2012, all redevelopment agencies in California were dissolved. The proposed revisions incorporate these changes. The policy will apply to successor agency designated employees. Three additional changes were made for clarification. One, the following are specified as public purpose for which tickets can be distributed. Attracting or rewarding volunteer public service and encouraging or rewarding academic, athletic, or public service achievements by city students, residents, or businesses. Two, the phrase subject to budget appropriations was deleted from the city clerk's website posting requirement since the clerk's office has been regularly posting the form 802s on the city's website. Three, the transfer of an additional ticket to an immediate family member was deleted since it is subsumed within the transfer of a ticket to one guest. The proposed policy requires each designated ticket administrator to forward the completed form 802 to the city clerk and the FPVC within 15 days from the event date. The city clerk is required to post the Form 802 on the city's website within 30 days from the event date. The proposed policy retains its prior limitation of two tickets per official, one of which must be used by the official. However, the FPVC regulation allows the official to transfer his or her, his or her own ticket to a guest or immediate family member and this policy can be revised to reflect that. 
This policy has been reviewed by the city manager's office, the city clerk's office, and the arena authority. The revised policy, if adopted, will be effective upon council adoption. That concludes my presentation, and I can answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Constant? Well, I have one question. I always have to call Rick on this one particular issue, and it's kind of unique to me. Um, I noticed it said that you can give one ticket to a gift as a guest and it doesn't go on a form 700 but what when that what <coughs> happens when your spouse who gets the guest ticket is also an elected official does that oh. trigger something because my wife is also elected official and I just haven't taken her but I'd like <laughs> to know how that gets addressed because I've had to multiple times call Rick because it creates a dynamic and I do know that other people have had spouses that have worked in other um, government agencies where they do file form 700s and I just want to make sure that if there is one where I decide that that guest is going to be my wife does a separate 802 or whatever number of form this is have to be done because she's an elected official well I think in, in the past she has gotten or received a ticket as an elected official uh, similar to you but, but, but so that's separate her, whatever, her agency has to deal with that to the extent that she is your guest, I think it's covered by or subsumed in our policy. And whether she's an elected official or not, if you bring her as a guest, I, I don't believe the fact that she's an elected official because she isn't being given the the gift as an elected official. And that's how, I, and we can verify that with the FPPC, but that's how I understand the rules. If you could, I just don't want to make any mistakes. Okay. And I would like to take my wife with me once in a while. Any other comments or questions? Mayor. I just assume that if council members have questions, they can ask Rick or at the council meeting when this is agendized. Yep. Motion approved. Should we put it Sorry. not, this will not be on the 19th? It will be on the 19th. Uh, we will bring it whenever you want it. Not the 19th. Well, we have time on the afternoon agenda. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah. All right, That's we'll see. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing we have on the afternoon agenda is the it. Cortex report, basically. Yeah. Okay. And some mi minor items, so. This could be consent, I assume. Um, it, actually, it would be good if it was on the 19th agenda because there is going to be a distribution of San Jose State football tickets, uh, a fairly widespread. I think Ed knows more about it than I do at this point, but it would be good to have that in place. Um, as an employee recognition. As an employee recognition yes, event. If I yes. could just confirm the date uh, for the committee's information. Yeah, this would be the yeah, Friday after Friday. Thanksgiving, so it's the 29th, I believe. 29th. And this will that, be the last uh, meeting before that. Okay. San Jose State has um, indicated that they would like to offer a City of San Jose Employee Appreciation Day so that we make tickets available to our staff and, and uh, would like to get the word out on that. Okay, so motion. Can be consent? Yes. Okay, put it on the consent on, on the 19th. Yep. Any other comments on it, on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unopposed. That's what we'll do. It's approved. Okay, items uh, four and five, pretty much the same topic, retention of police academy graduates, two different memorandums. You have this one too. And then a, a third <coughs> memorandum that came right. in today from Present. Council Member uh, Rocha uh, recommending that we defer the discussion of this, uh, these items to closed session for council okay. discussion. So what I'd like to do is refer them to staff and let staff work on them and figure out whether it needs to come back through closed session or rules committee or open session or whatever after staff has a chance to, uh, to work on them. Um, we, we do have a request in one of these from Vice Mayor and Councilor Camas to return to council with a proposal by December 17th. Uh, whether or not that's uh, doable, I, I guess would be up to the, how much work the staff needs to, needs to do on this. We, we've had some discussion on this and in the past, so they've already started working on yeah. it, I know. May I suggest that <coughs> since this is both a closed and open session item, we would start with a closed session. We would return to closed session and then we have the option to come back into open session. Vice Mayor? Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and, and I'm fine with that. Um, obviously, Council Member Johnny Camus and I raised the issue uh, because this is an issue that the public uh, recently really come to uh, pay much attention to. And um, while we're going to leave it up to the city's office, the city attorney's office to do the research and uh, further analysis, we've actually uh, conducted some preliminary analysis and research on our own and found out that uh, 
the cities of Los Angeles and, and Oakland and Hayward have uh, created a, uh, a process where they call contract violator, uh, where they issue contract to um, officers, or oh, well not officers, but recruiters, uh, recruits be prior to entering the academy. So there are various um, things, uh, measures that these cities have actually uh, found a way uh, to go about asking the uh, academy graduates to pay back the cost that was incurred uh, to train and educate them. And so we wanted to raise this issue uh, in the public arena so that taxpayers understand um, that while we're using their dollars to pay to train these officers, that we're hoping that they will consider uh, staying and working for the city of San Jose for a certain amount of time. And so um, I'm okay with uh, directing staff to do the analysis, come back to us, uh, whether in closed session or an open session, uh, but, but our intent is to raise the issue so that public's aware that the city of San Jose is looking into this because it is a very important issue. So if that's a motion, I second it. That would be the motion. All right, we have a motion to refer to staff under those described conditions. We have a couple people want to speak. Mitch, Richard McCoy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, now that I've heard what you said here, I'm willing just to defer my comments until after the session, but I must say that uh, the uh, Vice Mayor and, and uh, Councilman Camus' uh, memo on this bring its, it to light to the citizens, and I'm surprised that the city so far has not had a policy in regards to this, but I think it's a very good idea. So I'll wait and hear the results of the future study. Thank you. Mr. Wall? I would uh, caution going down the path of imposition on our police officers or city employees any further. The taxpayers voted for what they got. But the taxpayers are responsible for basically the destruction of the San Jose Police Department and further the brain drain of the organization as a whole. So there has to be consequences for the taxpayers and they're feeling it and because there's just not enough police Crime and burglaries are up all over the place. Um, and so I would say to the representatives of the taxpayers that you inform the taxpayers that it's their own fault, that they brought this on themselves. Furthermore, that they, the taxpayers should really sit down and, and tell the elected officials to uh, capitulate to what the San Jose Police Officers Association wants. And this will put all this issue of uh, police recruits leaving, San Jose police officers leaving to rest basically overnight. But it must be stressed, it's the taxpayers that made a decision to do what they did. And the consequences are is that police officers are leaving in droves, they're being siphoned off uh, at the academy, and it is the taxpayers' fault for not being more involved in their community and being more informed about their decisions and um, they're getting what their just deserts. Stay, I, I would suggest stay away from imposing anything on any more city employees, especially police and fire. Thank you. That concludes public testimony. So we have a motion to refer the memorandum from, from Vice Mayor Nguyen and Council Mayor Camus and the memorandum from Council Mayor Licardo to the staff to come back through closed session on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unopposed? That's what we'll do. I think the last item is a revisions to the Rules and Open Government Committee work plan. Item that, that, is, five. that is basically just one change to the rules in lieu date and moving it from the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, so it doesn't affect you because you don't attend that meeting. It but we need easy. to get that done before we can distribute the agenda. Okay. Mr. Wall, you want to speak? I think there needs to be an addendum to the rules um, that was on there with reference to making a mandatory quorum. It is foreseeable and reasonable that uh, members of the Rules Committee and alternates have uh, legitimate travel on for city business. And sometimes these travel arrangements overlap and there's not a quorum. So I would think that it would be prudent to uh, amend the number of alternates. And when there's not a quorum, 
somebody from the 18th floor has to be snagged from whatever they're doing and come down here so the business of the city can move forward. Thank you. That includes public testimony. We have a motion to approve the revisions on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None opposed. Revisions are approved. That is the last item of business. Open forum. Mr. Wall. Uh, I request that uh, the city take time and the necessary effort to um, recognize the life and contributions of uh, Joy Johnson, who completed her 25th New York Marathon race. Uh, she was injured during the race, but got up and finished the race, was interviewed on television, collapsed, was taken to Bellevue Hospital, entered into a coma, and passed away. She would have been 87 on Christmas Day. Uh, she's a lifetime San Jose resident, uh, a marathoner. Uh, she ran all over the place. And uh, Councilmember Alvario has a, the family contact information for you to make your decision. Um, I think she's a national treasure, certainly a San Jose treasure, and certainly to be um, recognized for her contributions. Second, there's a, a, a commercial operation, an agriculture operation. Uh, I found out uh, yesterday, Councilmember Liccardo said it was uh, garden to table. It's uh, constructed, uh, the location is set before you in the memorandum. I support urban agriculture. I'm just a little leery on the uh, particulars since they use a, uh, a bank's parking lot hopping the curb to get to this construction site. And uh, photographs are tended already to the t and &E committee and to the office city attorney. Lastly, I'd like to give uh, congratulations to our future city manager uh, hopefully, when he becomes the appointing authority, uh, status quo will not be something that the city of San Jose has been known for. Thank you. Johnny Lee. Hello, <coughs> Council. Mr. Mayor, wanted to talk about the urban village, um, more specifically about the residential and housing problem that we have in the area. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about how we shouldn't build residential, and I'm, I think that's wrong. Uh, residential prices in this area are some of the highest it's been in, uh, ever, and commercial real estate prices are some of the lowest it's been. Uh, the problem is not the fact that we don't have enough commercial real estate prices. There's vacancies, 80% vacancies in some of the shopping centers in my district. It's not the fact that we don't have enough commercial real estate prices. It's the problem is that we have too much permits, regulations that make it difficult for businesses to operate in San Jose. So they go right over the border to Milpitas or Sunnyvale or uh, Cupertino, because it's much easier to start a business there. Um, and at the same time, the reason residential prices are so high is because there's so many people moving to this area, population is growing, and we're choosing as a city not to build. And that's just forcing people into a small area, causing traffic to get worse. And, um, and yeah, that's why we have so many people in every house. We have three or four people in every room, so we don't have enough houses for the amount of people we have in this town. So when we look at the fact that, yeah, we have you know, not enough jobs for people, you have to keep in mind that's why we also have such high property prices, high cost of living, high rent, so many homeless people. It's because we're choosing not to build residential in this area. But, and commercial real estate, it's already low. It's been in 20 something years. So I don't think the answer is to build more commercial real estate. We have to build residential. We have to do it appropriately so it doesn't cost more services to the city. But yes, we do have to build residential in San Jose. That concludes public testimony, concludes the open forum. We're adjourned.